Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here this evening. And also, hello to the World Poker Tour. Good to see you here as well. My name is Cliff Long. I'm going to be your guide this evening on our haunted pub crawl. We're going to be visiting about, oh, three taverns this evening. Or four. <laughs> Would Six, like to hear? order out breakfast, you know, that kind <laughs> of thing. But three taverns and the stories that are associated with them, the haunted tales that have been part of Fells Point's uh, traditions and history for a very, very long time. And uh, with the three taverns we're going to be visiting uh, this evening were what I would call full-service taverns in their time. So I'm going to have a few stories about all those aspects of these places. Now, the stories I'm going to be sharing with you this evening these have been part of Fells Point tradition and legend for some of them for centuries. So I don't say believe or not. I will leave that up to you. I'm just the storyteller. And one thing before we go in, in my pouch here, okay. I have a very special little tool. I have, if you can read this in the semi-light here, what does that orange print say? The ghost meter. I have a ghost meter here. I have a ghost meter. And we are going to use this this evening to detect possible paranormal activity at the various places we're going to be visiting. Then we are going to head into our first tavern. That's right behind us. That's Bertha's right over here. Grab a beverage and I will meet you right up in front behind that red door. And we shall begin our stories of the night. So here we are at Bertha's. This is our first stop on our, um, on our haunted pub crawl of Fells Point. And before I tell you the stories associated with this tavern, and I'll have two for you if you'd like, is I do have to ask, and, and Melissa, this is an important question, really. Do you know the difference between a ghost and a spirit? Now, please, before you answer, don't say, oh, sure, you drink spirits. Ha, ha, ha. I've never heard that one before. <laughs> Do you know the difference? Because there is one in Western ghost lore. Ghosts and spirits, the actual difference between the two, is a ghost is a spirit who has died a violent or a sudden death. Okay? Their spirit is in shock. All right? And, and they're, they're essentially, they are condemned to replicate and redo things they've done in life over and over. Back in the 1790s, their many of these buildings of course did exist okay and this building was here it was no exception and the upstairs even though this was we think it was a tavern it was many different things in its time it was a set of what we call apartments today okay and on the second floor of this building today is a storeroom and what do you keep in a storeroom normally Crap. okay that'll work okay <laughs> Crap and other things. Uh, there is a storeroom up on the second floor. Um, at least it's a storeroom most of the time that staff will go up that stairway and they normally go up in pairs. There are a few people here who will go there by themselves. They just need a little support in case it's one of those special days. Because they go up to that storeroom which is kept locked and up, open that locked door and turn the knob and push the door open and if it is that unusual day once or twice a year, it's not a storeroom. It's a young girl's bedroom. And it actually is appointed as though it would have looked in the 1790s. Very pale, very ghostly. And standing at the window is a young lady about 10 years old wearing the clothing of the 1790s. She looks up and she sees her intruders. And she throws her arms in the air and she screams. Now no one's here to scream, but they see it and the room dematerializes and vortexes around her. She disappears and the room becomes a storeroom again. Not the sort of thing you're expecting when you're going in for salt or pepper or plates or that other stuff you were talking about earlier. And uh, no one knows who she is. We don't have her name, but we do know she is always looking out that window wearing the clothing of the 1790s. She's always looking at the square. 1790s, there were a number of very virulent, violent yellow fever epidemics here in Fells Point. It was lowland. And there is a rumor, and I will stress, rumor only, the city has never excavated, that people were dying so quickly from this virulent strain of yellow fever, bodies are piling up at the morgue, and there was a decision made, since there were, weren't enough grave diggers for Siegel Graves, to dig a mass grave right here in the square where 350 Baltimoreans are now buried. 
she may be looking at her last resting place. So we don't know. So when we cross that square in a little while, um, walk a little lighter than you might. Mm -hmm. The cat's eye. Many years ago, when the bar had just opened, there was a very, very popular day bartender here. And his name was Jeff Knapp. K-N-A-P-P, -P, Jeff Knapp. I tell you the story because the two owners of our company apparently actually had a paranormal experience when they came down here collecting stories one day and they didn't know it. Okay. And here's what happened. Amy, Amy Linwander, one of our owners, came down to uh, Fells Point one evening, or I should say one morning, to do a little shopping. It was a Sunday and uh, she parked a car out front about 9 o'clock in the morning. Now back then it was difficult for a bar to get a license to open before noon on a Sunday, so she didn't expect to find the cat open because uh, Father's Day was coming and uh, her dad, uh, you know, liked the cat's eye and was looking for a t-shirt, wanted a t-shirt from the cat's eye. So she was going to stop here after 12 o'clock to, uh, to get the t-shirt. She gets out of the car at five minutes after nine and is stunned to find the cat's eye is open. So she goes, oh, I'm going to get my shirt now. Okay, so in she goes. She, you their breakfast beer? Yeah, yeah, so she comes in. There's nobody here but her and the bartender. Okay, and his name is Jeff Knapp. And Jeff, actually, um, that's, a, that's a pencil drawing of him up there. And apparently, apparently Jeff comes out from, from the back room here and has a conversation with her. Okay, and, and sells her a shirt. Oh, she was delighted to get the shirt. He gives her a cup of coffee. And on a weekend, the cat's eyes open, busy, big crowd, all the rest of that. And they come in, they spend a couple hours here getting stories. And as they're about to leave, uh, Amy stops and goes, oh, you know, thanks for all the great stories you know, we've got here. Um, but she says, is, is the guy here? You know, I, I stopped in a couple months ago and, and I got this shirt I was surprised to see open. It was like nine in the morning on a Sunday, but she says, hey, you know, I was glad you were here. And then she said, I noticed the staff, which was all female at the time, okay, kind of were giving me the bunny in the headlights look, you know. Huh? And then the owner, Sylvia, comes off from the back and says, excuse me, I, I overheard the conversation. She says, did you say you talked to a guy a few months ago? She goes, yeah, it was a guy. It was a Sunday morning. Again, surprised to see open. She goes, oh. And then she pointed to a picture behind the bandstand. Oh, my God. And she goes, that him? She goes, yeah, that's him. Is he around? <laughs> she goes, no, can't help you. No, Jeff died about 15 years ago, actually. He still likes to come open the bar when nobody's around, you know, oh. so. Voila. Okay, our next stop. Okay, yeah. is the horse you came in on. It's the oldest tavern in Baltimore, opened up in 1775, opened up as the horse in 1775. It's never closed. And its main claim to fame, beside it being the oldest tavern in Baltimore, seventh oldest in the country, is that we know for a fact documented it was a regular stop for writer and poet Edgar Allan Poe. As a matter of fact, he was sitting at the, he was sitting at the front bar when he had that fatal drink. That's where he was. So whatever took him, the aneurysm, the heart attack, we don't know. He was sitting at the bar. He staggered 30 feet out, left to the front door, fell in the street. He died in hospital two days later. Not in the street like some people think. But the horse claims Edgar Allan Poe. Well, here we are at the horse you came in on. It's the oldest tavern in Baltimore. Seventh oldest in the country. And the room we're in right now is the original bar. The back bar was the stable, and what is now the horse you rode out on, which is their tequila annex. If I have any of you folks out there who are big tequila fans, they've got 50 or 60 right across the way. Great stuff. But we do know that when Poe was drinking here, he lived about five blocks away on Eastern Avenue, what is now Eastern Avenue. He would come here to get a drink or get a few pennies by reading snippets of his new writing. So we know the raven is read here in this bar by the author. We know that the telltale heart and parts of the fall of the House of Usher were read in this room by the author for a beer, a whiskey, or a few pennies. Now, it's said that about once a year now, maybe twice, you see those double doors over there? Yeah. If they're closed, they will blow open on their own. And a blast of cold air comes in. It's chilly, right? Yeah. Everybody looks up to see what happened, but nobody sees anything. But about 25, 30 years ago, a bartender behind that front bar 
noticed, his back was to the, to the door, he noticed something in an overhead mirror that used to hang there. So it caught his eye and he looked up, because the doors were open, everybody looks, nobody sees, but what he saw was a pair of boots walk in. Now for those of you who didn't hear me well over the music, I did say boots, B-O-O-T-S. <laughs> Not the other well, thing. What did you want to say? Yes. Well, you know, what did you want to say, Clint? I mean, there's a lot of them walking here, too. Some of them are really scary. Some are really nice. But we're talking <laughs> boots. Now, the boots walk in. They're the same style boots that Poe was wearing the day that he died. He actually walked, or the day he collapsed. They walked through the bar. They head back into what is the stable. They make a right turn through one of the stable doors that used to be there, and they disappear. Since that day, they've claimed Poe the resident ghost or spirit. They're not sure. A toast to Edgar Allan Poe and the great stories, and great to be here at the Horseshoe Team in on this evening.